Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. This, I promise, is our last episode of the drawer making series. And bit of a spoiler alert, but we finally got that drawer to fit just exactly the way we want it. Do not miss the end. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. So as luck would have it, I had a couple of pieces of furniture from my past show up the other day. I had given them to my sister. She moved downsized from a house and an apartment into the room, gave it to her son. He's moved from his house into an apartment. He doesn't have room for it and didn't want to sell it. So anyway, we picked it up. So I'll show it to you. So this was, uh, I'll give you a bit of history on it. I had designed a uh, four-piece for some folks. You know, this would be, go back early 90s. So there was a low table, there was two end tables, and then there was a hall table. The hall table was about a foot wide and tall. And I, they were big, heavy timbers, kind of simple, very simple design, but on an angle, and of course, dovetailed. Uh, I don't have the third piece, I don't know where that is. But anyway, so I'll show you this. I, uh, it's made out of birch. They, this was actually the, pro, this is, I decided to do one for myself first to see if I liked it. And then you saw the finished one, if you go back a few episodes in uh, my portfolio, it was done out of ash and walnut. So this one was done out of birch. I don't know why, I must have just had some birch. Anyway, so it's a, it's, a, it's a big dovetail to cut, but after I had done it and we had it laying around for a long time, I kind of got bored with it and there was the, uh, you know, the wood's going to uh, shrink, shrink and swell, so when this is flush, it's, it's never flush, it doesn't stay flush forever, so you could feel it. So I decided to go and try something. And I think back now the amount of work it must have been. So I put a V-groove bed in the router and I went in and I outlined the entire joint lines to give it the opposite of, you've, if you've seen ep the episodes where we showed where he actually left the dovetails proud, this is we did the opposite. Now, I, I'm, I was looking at it the other day and I thought, why didn't I come in? I should have come in with a chisel and followed this line, this slope, right into a corner, and this one, and met into a corner, instead of having it rounded over, which is indicative of having been done with a router bit. That way it would have looked a lot neater. But it was, uh, it was a nice way to dress up an otherwise somewhat boring joint. This is where I, I remember, you may remember me saying how I like to use heavy pins, thick pins, thinner tails. It elongates the tail and I just think it looks better. I'll just, in case you're interested, I'll give you the dimensions. This piece is 18 inches wide, so there's a joint line. Right there. There might be more than one. There is. There's a joint line right there. There's a joint line right there. So this is made up out of three pieces. Somebody scratched it up. But the nice thing about it is I can refinish this and, and I may. In fact, I, I probably will go in there and do it just because now that I thought of it, I can't sleep until I do it. But it's, uh, and it shouldn't be that hard to go in there and just finish off those corners. Same thing down here. So 18 wide, 16 inches high. And if you run at the longest, it is Looks to be 49 and a half inches. So this would be your low table, which is pretty sturdy. I mean, it's amazing how strong that joint is. Anybody who's cut dovetails would appreciate that. Now this one, which is the, the end table, and I just, no, I didn't remember seeing this before, but this has developed lots of cracks. There's a crack here, there's a crack here, there's a crack here, there's a crack here, there's a crack here. So that meant either that's resulted in uneven movement, which would be odd because it's both birch, both are pieces of birch. I can't imagine the thinner piece moving uh, at a different rate that would actually make a difference. That top is three quarter and the side is inch and five eighths. This piece is 20 inches high. It is 14 and three quarter wide and length actual length is 20 inches and the high tail of the uh, the uh, what do we call hall. it the what yeah it we hall? call it a hall table if I, if I remember correctly it was probably somewhere around 36 inches I would have guessed and it was narrower it was only a foot wide but in the comment section tell me what you think of this always interested in your now if you don't have a I don't mind criticism I appreciate it. I think you learn more from that than anything else. But if you don't make comments that are going to embarrass either me or you. But I would love to hear what you have to think. 
You should tell them now that you do not have plans for this. Yeah, I don't have plans for this, no. Tell me what you think about my idea of if that, if going in there and and uh, finishing those corners, taking it from a, ra a radius to a nice sharp corner would be a detail that you would bother spending the time on. And I'll do it down here as well. In fact, did I do it down there? No, those are radiuses as well. Now, I also noticed right here that in doing that, I exposed, I, I expect what happened there is that there might have been an undercut on that surface, although it wouldn't make sense to have done it, but I may have back then. And if I was doing it again, I would balance, I'm not sure how you would do it, I'd have to think about it, but you notice how big the half pin in over here is versus over here. Now, the dimension from here to here is fairly close, although this is, so if I do go in and do something with this, I might go in and just cut that down. It would be a long taper from nothing and, and cut a little bit off of this. I don't know whether it's worth all that or not. But this just took a little out, as too out of balance. But that's the problem you get when it's on an angle. In order to have, in order to have any amount of material here, you've got to have, you're gonna end up with a fair bit amount of, amount of material right here. And then on this side, in order to have this kind of works in reverse. In order to have any amount of material left right here, you're going to have to have a bigger chunk right there. Anyway, it was fun to do. And it's, it's uh, great for, it, I mean, it's so simple. It's three pieces, right? The nice thing about it, as I said, is it's solid wood. It can survive 20 years of kids. You go in, you refinish the whole thing, and it's brand new again. Mind you, getting down in there, if I had to go, if I, so the only downside to refinishing it is you're going to have a different color. And if you had to go down in there and try to clean up all those walls, that would be, uh, that I don't, I wouldn't relish. Yeah. All right, let's get at it. Oh, another comment I wanted to make to you. You may have noticed that the, uh, our channel is taking some turns improving I hope so this guy in the red the uglier is, of the two yes the one who only a mother could love his uh, this is the retired Colonel Luther Sheely US, Art US, US Army artillery and Luther has been working has taken on his latest project is to uh, improve our website so I would really love your feedback on what you think of the changes so far he'll love it too and uh, yeah, so come put that in the comment section if you, if you uh, want to voice your opinion and let us know what you think. We're really interested. All right. This is the day that we make this thing fit. We will not turn the camera off until it does. Bring this Do over. Do we want to so take that off? No, I put those blocks on there to keep it from falling off. All right. So I... Uh, I sharpened up the blade. Actually, Jake sharpened up the blade, and I got three of them there, so I don't have to stop. Now, I just want to get a scrap of wood. And here. What? Here. Okay, it's taking a very light cut. I, uh, I thought about this last night, and, and all I can come up with, and this happens every time, and that's, I'm surprised that I haven't stopped to give it more thought over the years. Um, it's, it's difficult to fit with the bottom in place, so that's why I do it without it. Easier to slide that on and work it. But... The one thing the bottom does do is it straightens out the sides. So if those sides are sloped in here like that at all, and it wouldn't happen from, from the uh, planing process because when you set it down on, on this piece you're working with, then that's going to keep it, at least, at least that's going to keep the sides uniform thickness front to back, right? You're planing from here all the way through. But if those sides... 
if those sides had a slight bow like this, you put the bottom in, and now that bow gets kicked out, and now all of a sudden it gets tight in the middle, which is the only thing I can think of. I remember I always thought that somehow that bottom sliding into the groove was causing this piece to bow out like that, but uh, I, I've given up on that idea. It can't be. So, so it just starts to get tight right there, if indeed it's getting tight in the opening. And what I should probably do is get my shim and check that. Now, you're, uh, you're witnessing this as it happens, so I'm in, I'm in new territory in terms of trying to discover the hows and whys of this. So I'm going to use the 1,000 shim, and I'm going to see if, as I move the drawer in, if I lose clearance on the side. I guess I'm just going to verify it because I think it's pretty obvious that we do. So out here where it moves easily. It's funny, as thin as it is, it gets pointy. Maybe I need to... Okay, uh, it's super tight right there. Now, I'll try it at the top. I would think that at the top it wouldn't be as tight because as you get away from the bottom, that allows the top pieces to move in. Come on. All right, you just pull the drawer all the way out. <coughs> That's snug still. Not not quite as. So You don't want to. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to stay away from the front on purpose, because I don't want to alter that fit when it's closed, and that shouldn't be a problem. I'm not pulling off much. Remember, if you if you're going to go partial, you have to be lifting your plane off while you're still in a forward motion to avoid leaving a uh, skin tag on there. Now, I shouldn't get carried away either, but I'm pretty positive it's going to take more than that. <laughs> It's really nerve-wracking to be doing this when you don't have a clear sign that you're working on the actual problem area. Yeah, I got a bit of a bump right down here. So as I run my hand over that, it's nice and smooth. I don't feel any any uh, plane tracks. So just so I'm taking a little bit off of both sides, I'm gonna do this one. I gotta trade your places, Jake.
I, um... Oh, did I show them? The saws? Oh, come here. I, I want to show you something. I want to show you what uh, we've been doing lately. So I, I try to call every customer that buys something off our site. I, I'm, the number of orders coming in per day has exceeded my ability to do that, but I try to make sure I at least call all the first-time orders. And I'm um, surprised how many people have told me, Rob, I so appreciate what you've done with this coronavirus thing and everyday videos that I uh, just wanted to place an order. And I said, well, thank you. I didn't intend on that, but what a nice thing. Anyway, so look, this is just the last couple of days. And if you've seen their video on how we do saws, you know how much work goes into it. So that's what I'm facing, and all of those are sold. So that's why we're up until uh, 2 o'clock in the morning every night trying to get caught up. Other way. Oh, yeah, thank you. And that's just the saws. We make about 70% uh, of the tools that we have in our store, we actually make here. So it's been like putting out fires trying to keep up. Ooh. Okay, I gotta stop talking, I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing, because I, 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 otherwise I would've taken off more than I should've. you're watching this for the first time, what I'm trying to do is create a little burnish mark wherever this is rubbing so I can go in and address it. And without the, without the bottom in place, that one in there had, no, had lots of clearance top to bottom, side to side. Well, I don't want any clearance side to side, but it, went, it moved smoothly. So obviously what we just did addressed 90% of the problem. I almost, uh, I'm extremely unsure on what to do. I do not want to take it off the wrong side. Well, I'm gonna take one pass right here just because I don't like the look of that. Just the temptation to keep going and just stop and try. Another thank you. Okay, so we still have up and down. I can see both sides are still moving. So that's not the issue. Now I noticed a little bit of a, that was a burr. Just a mark in the wood, I guess a mark in the wood. Okay, so at this point, I put my headgear on so I can see better. my knuckles. So I don't see anything that is overly obvious right here.
maybe a little bit on this top. Remember, at this stage, you can't take more than one pass. Two at the absolute most before you stop and try it. It'll, it'll go from being too snug to almost, you almost go too far and you lose it. Again, it's not up, it's not side to side, or up and down. So it's got to be side to side. It's not up in here, because without the bottom in place, that fit. Try it. Yeah, I was all set to do it. Try playing the other side. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I don't think I, you know where my six inch rule is? I just wanna see if I've got a crown you got a flashlight here? No. I think that's still nice and flat. So I'm going to pick up right around here and then end right back here somewhere. I'm going to go full width. I'm always running my hand over there just to feel, make sure I don't leave plane tracks. It's getting marginally better each time, but by about the amount that I'm taking off. Try, yeah. Which only makes sense, right? Did we release the screwdrivers today? Mm-mm. Are they, are we going to? <clears throat> yes, that was me bumping the plane against the, I've got a, shouldn't break my own rule. I wonder if I went in and if I was to plane the edge of this just to take a couple of swipes off the first four inches on both sides. It wouldn't it wouldn't defeat it wouldn't defeat the advantage of having the drawer bottom bottom out on both grooves in terms of preventing racking. But it would uh, if this was doing what I said, kicking it out, it would eliminate that. But One to about there, down the middle, the edge. Okay, I still.
still have my fit side to side. Down the end edge, in the middle. For those of you interested in our Purple Heart project, we uh, made our selection. We notified all of the vets. We made our selection Tuesday. So we, how many do we have? 18. No, no, how many do we have total applicants? 85. So out of 85 vets that applied, we chose 18 plus one, which is an alternate. And uh, we just notified them yesterday, so those guys were pretty excited. And keep your fingers crossed that we're going to be able to hold our classes uninterrupted by this coronavirus. If I did this long enough, maybe it would wear to fit. Just kidding. Only that would jump out at me and say. You see that right there on the end? But that's right. not right here. It's real glossy right there. You know what I see? What? I see highlights on these knots. You do? Yep. Well. That would stand to reason because they, they're they harder. But yes, I've seen that same high spot on that pin, but it's not affecting anything. Just to say. What? Well, I want to point out that the pencil marks are still there. I know. That's why I've gone over it several times. It's gone there, it's gone there, but it's still here. It's still there. I know. I got rid of two. I'm just going to see if there's a difference. Mm, there is. That's a bite there. I'm going to put this, <clears throat> put this little drawer in to seal off that. Still a bit snug. Where's my uh, shim?
tight there. Tight there. Okay, I'm going to take a pass. I've uh, tried to read as many of your comments as I can. It's interesting to uh, hear some of the thoughts about spouses who think warning you don't take that long to build me a chest of drawers. room for another I'm actually only concerned right to there because I don't want to fit this we haven't fit that one yet and that's part of the online workshop so I don't want to go beyond I don't want to be go, go beyond this one on this one so I'm just going to worry about getting it perfect right to there side might be dragging a little bit right along that top edge go back and check these knots again yeah they are that's a good catch Jake you should be putting pencil on them well Same would be true for that little squirrely piece right there. I'm hesitant to bring that blade out anymore. I shouldn't go on there that without checking. Okay. Where did we say it was a little bit heavy? You remember? Which one? You mean the bottom the pin? Those, uh, those knots keep showing up. I need to get a little more room. <clears throat> yeah, I need to change this up a bit. How are we for time? We're at 34. <clears throat> a little something else about the kernel. 
He's only strange in a few ways. Number one, he eats grits. Number two, he thinks you should boil your peanuts. Make sure I said that right. Which turns into this hot mess. So if you think that's strange, let me know. I'll pass it on to him. Great way to ruin a salty treat. Boiling it. Ah, that was way too much. Okay, that's clean. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with that anymore. That's the test. If you can push it in from one corner and it doesn't jam. Now, <clears throat> let me tell you what, what will happen. And then I'm gonna tell you how you can watch. Um, <clears throat> got more work to do on this. <clears throat> we have to go in. Um, we have to, we're going in here and we have to trim out. I'm gonna put uh, cove molding all around the inside of this so it makes it easier to clean. We've got to go in and come up with an ingenious way of, and not so much an ingenious way, but a nice way of accessing the underside of the drawer to get it open. Same thing on here. Um, we've got to go in and do the final fit on the drawer front so that when they close, it's as seamless as possible. We've got a whole lot to do on here. I'll show you this. I don't know if I mentioned to you not before, but really screwed this up. This, this, was, this is one of those knot in the stomachs. Was so careful to make sure that everything was lined up perfectly. Did I already tell them about this? All right, I'm just reminding you. If you look at this little drawer, this little pencil drawer, when it closes, it hides, right? That drawer front came right out of that piece. So when it came to doing this one, and remember we're filming this three times a week, so a lot going on in between. Somehow I managed to get this piece flipped around. This should be on the inside and the inside should be on the outside. Well, there's no way of fixing it because we've already cut the dovetails in it and it would be too small. So what I'm thinking of doing, can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna remove about a 16th of an inch of material off of all this. And then I'm gonna take a piece of the heavy veneer or I'll make it, whatever. And that piece will go back on there. This section will be taken out. I'll cut the front 16th of an inch off of this drawer and I will put that piece on so that we'll go back and we'll have that, that uh, lovely hidden, you know, if you look closely, you can, it really stands out. Anyway, so this is our last episode on doing, building the drawer. If you want, and uh, I, part of the other reason that I told you about how much work we've we got going on here, and there's only a handful of us doing all this, is uh, we're getting beyond what we can have time for. So <clears throat> we're gonna do, I'm committed to doing three videos a week for you, but I can't keep up to five. However, if you wanna follow along with this, I'll give you a free month to our online workshop. We, we do three 45 minute episodes each week on working on this. And uh, you're welcome to it. There's no, th you don't have to pay for anything. You just go on, you register. At the end of the month, if you don't want to continue, you just cancel it. It's, it's an easy process. If you want to do it, you'll, you'll get four times three, 12, 12 more 45 minute episodes of us working on the rest of this. And today when we film, we are, what are we doing today? Uh, uh, finishing off the stop? Yeah, so we're finishing off the top. And I think we're going to start to work on finding a finger recess or a way of opening those drawers. So how do they do that, Jake? Look right down there. 
There'll be a link. No, there'll be a link down there. And then it'll be a code so that when you go to the website, robcosman.com, it'll fill you in all the directions. And you have to use the code. And you have to use if the code. If you didn't use the code, you're paying money. If you don't use the code, you're paying money. So you have to use the code. Make it an easy code that they can... It's designed... We have to use the please, same code. Please copy and paste. Copy and paste. Then you don't have to worry about the spelling or the uppercase, lowercase. Um, what else do I, oh, so what I want to tell you this is, so tomorrow we're going to do... We're going to start a whole series of videos on really important stuff. And uh, I'm just going to introduce tomorrow's real briefly. It's going to be on sharpening, but it's going to be the 2020 version. And a lot of folks have said, Rob, you're not sharpening the way you used to and whatever. I said, no, it evolves. So we're going to go in and we're going to make a very concise video on my method of sharpening a plane blade. And I'll walk you all through it and it'll be designed to teach you how to do it with the way I'm currently doing it. So if nothing else, it'll give you the up-to-date version. So don't forget to, if you like what you see, like, subscribe to our channel, then you, you'll be notified, especially since we're not going to be doing them every day. We will finish, finish off this week. But going forward, you're going to get the Saturday night live workshop, which is a two-hour ordeal. Every other weekend, every other Saturday, it's a question and answer. In fact, I thought today, I so said what we should do is a question and answer on just hand tools for one of them. Um, then you're going to get two other... Uh, topic, whatever, each week. Plus, you could have the three online workshop videos. Well, that would bring you right back to seven a week. So there you go. So subscribe, hit the bell so it'll notify you when they come out. And help me, Jake. You're supposed to remind me. What else am I supposed to say? The like, like, <laughs> share, yeah, whatever. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow with our uh, sharpening one. And don't forget, tomorrow night, which is Saturday night at 6 o'clock Eastern time, we do our live YouTube workshop. We also use it as a fundraiser for Purple Heart. And we're going to read off all the names of the guys that have been selected, give them a shout-out. Hope to see you there. Thanks for, being, thanks for watching this. Thanks for being a great audience. I appreciate the fact that you tell me that you enjoy this. It keeps us going. Really do appreciate it. Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. Friday is... Tomorrow is the one we're going to do the sharpening, the yeah. new sharpening one. And you said tomorrow is the live. And I apologize. Saturday is the live. You'll get it. All right. Don't forget to uh, also down there, you'll find a, uh, you can join our newsletter, which has a theme every month. And there's always one or two videos specific to that theme. The current one is on, oh, sharpening, sharpening oddball stuff like uh, router plane, skew block plane, scrub plane, shoulder plane. Stuff that you don't always use. Anyway. All right. See you tomorrow.